Peter. All right, so let's see. Yes, do we have any? Um, on the growth and future of, this, of STEAM education at the Oregon Middle School, we have at least three teachers here. Um, I'm going to introduce Nate Marr, who most of you know. And he's a science teacher, and he's going to introduce the other teachers and begin the presentation. In the center of your tables, there's a handout that Larry prepared that summarizes the program. So take a look. It's going to be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So starting off this morning, um, kind of a, always a student fan favorite is the, the show and tell. So we have a little show and tell for you this morning. I'd like to introduce my colleagues to that <coughs> in the school today. Um, Megan Tui, Cheryl Stout. David Spade, Dan Howard, Tim Knights, um, <coughs> principal's office over here, Shannon Anderson. Uh, if we do not get our show here right here soon, she'll be the most nervous person. <laughs> and I'm perfectly fine staying here a little bit longer, but things might be a little bit crazy over at the middle school, so we'll move things right along. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Oregon Rotary for their past, present, and future support of STEAM education here in Oregon, and um, speaking mostly for the middle school right now. Uh, started with Learner Park over 10 years ago, and we've, we've just added to our programming, uh, and it's really starting to uh, spread <coughs> rapidly. Uh, the concept of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics being integrated <coughs> together into one, so drawing upon the strengths of students um, and, and and skills and focus in a one particular area, drawing them into the other areas um, for a, just a, a more fun and meaningful and really inspirational experience for our students. So we put together a little uh, presentation here this morning to allow you to see some very <coughs> things that are going on in individual classes. Uh, I'll start with Tim um, taking care of, we'll, we'll go right in order with our steam, so the science end of things. <coughs> Well, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. We have a lot of good stuff to show you, and so hopefully we're going to go fast. Otherwise, there's no way we're going to get through everything. The first thing I wanted to highlight was um, Oregon Middle School's activity in something called Green and Healthy Schools Wisconsin. Um, Green and Healthy Schools is committed to nine different areas of improvement. And as a middle school, through the help of Rotary, we actually, at this moment, as a fledgling, I think they call it a sapling school, which means that you're, you're initially in the program, you've committed to following up with the program, we can actually say that this time that we meet eight of the nine areas. And a lot of that comes back to the hoop house, the composting, our commitment with Oregon Park, things that Rotary's been a part of that distinguish Oregon Middle School from a lot of the other schools around the state of Wisconsin. Um, so as we go through this program, the one that we're going to continue to work on because it stands out is transportation. Um, the idea of no idling zones, carpooling, some of these things are, are things that we're going to have to start to kind of wrap our, our mind around. Um, Andy Weiland's been invaluable in this whole process, just his, his input and his willingness to get information. This has not been an easy process, as <laughs> Andy's smiling. Um, the, the form for this is ridiculously thick and it asks questions. Um, such as how much do you spend per cubic, uh, cubic foot of trash every year based on this and that per school and all these things that I look at and I have no idea. I don't even know what days the trash gets picked up. So Andy's been a great help in that. Um, some of the things that we've done around the school are, are, are we've started kind of labeling some things. So all of our entrance doors by the, by the end of the week are going to be adorned with these Green and Healthy Schools Wisconsin stickers. Essentially showing everybody that comes into school one of the core values that our school has, and that's to, to be sustainable, to have a low impact on the environment, and to teach our students to do the same thing. The other one, and I have a close up of this so you can see it, uh, <laughs> is on our paper towel dispensers. And that one quite simply says, these come from trees. <laughs> There's a group out in California that's been doing research over the last couple of years on these, and, and they say their claim, and now this is based on their evidence, but their claim is that just putting this sticker on your paper towel dispenser will save 100 pounds of paper every year. Now, we have some loose evidence from our janitorial staff that, in fact, the, the amount of paper towel being used has been reduced. Now, again, don't like hold me to that because that's just somebody saying, yeah, it looks like there's less stuff in the trash can. So <laughs> that works out well. This program, I'm going to go back for a second, this program sets up essentially everything that we do throughout the building in STEAM education. Um, when you look at the different areas, community involvement, energy, and environmental and sustainability education, environmental health, 
health and wellness, recycling, the school site, transportation, and water, those touch all the areas that you're going to hear about, all those letters, the S, T, E, A, and M, um, as we go through. So I'm going to start with science. I'm one of the science teachers. I work with Nate. I'm lucky enough to get to work with him. Um, and we've done some amazing things. We've taken a project that's been around for a long time, and we've started to tweak it this year. And this is an engineering project. So I brought some examples. You guys can look at these later. Um, but our students throw eggs off this roof while we do it for them. Don't freak out on me. We do it for them, and they have to engineer a vehicle to get that egg from the roof safely to the ground in one piece. So we've added some components where we do a paper folding lab, where we're, we're literally showing them, hey, if we fold paper different ways, you get different results. They add even an eye beam, or what's the strongest shape you can make? And so this one's really cool, because you see that they actually just took notebook paper and folded it up into some circles and put them on end. It's got quite a bit of strength to it. So it's just one of the projects that we do. One of the other ones, right along with the idea of engineering, is our black box, where our students are using these devices that you see on the table, they're pouring water in the top, and they're getting water out. They're keeping track of their data, and then they're actually having to reverse engineer what's inside. So it's a way for us to teach scientific modeling, but also a way for them to get some hands-on experience with engineering, working with groups in engineering, which that changes everything, because now we have multiple ideas, and what do we do with that? So that's a great project as well. Everybody in the room should be fairly familiar with the idea of prairie planting. Um, we start all those seeds in the classroom. This is one of our students from the past who's just an amazing kid. Um, had some needs, didn't want to have anything to do with this. And when, he, when I asked him really nice, he said, okay, we can do this. And so this was kind of a proud moment for him that he was getting his hands dirty and having a little bit of fun planting some prairie plants. Um, and then he came with us as well and got to plant some of those in the ground right here at Learner Park, one of the other highlights of the year. Again, all things that build around the idea of environmental education, sustainability, but allowing us to teach that science in context with the engineering and setting up a lot of things for other subjects such as tech that you're going to hear about momentarily. So, Mr. Tech Ed, Mr. Dan Howard, would you like to take over? Tech Ed, do you want to go sure. to Facebook? Yeah, we can do that. So one idea, I have a four-year-old and this is the first, uh, first year she went to school, you know, and I, as a teacher I thought, hey, we're really important. But then when you drop your kid off at school, you're like, man, teachers are really important now. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's my kid in there. So anyway, one way is, you know, one way I have a friend that, that is, that's also a teacher, and he started a, a Facebook page just to kind of communicate to parents just in short little clips of uh, what they're doing. So I thought, well, man, well, we, we could do this. So I kind of came up with this idea, or we did, and, and uh, I'm not a big Facebook guy. I do it, but not, not very well. But we did um, come up with a STEAM Facebook page, and we have, uh, Miss Tui has some great art stuff on there. We have some science stuff on there. This is, they're making the CO2 project, and it's kind of the, what kids remember in my class, you know, in 10, 15 years down the road, you know, they'll always say, hey, that's CO2 car, the CO2 project. It's a, it's a design engineering thing, so I mean, I don't know if I just, I guess bottom line is we just have the Facebook page, and we have, here there's a black box, building the CO2 vehicle, again. So I mean, I guess if, if you're on Facebook, you can like us on Facebook, which would be cool. Um, we're getting more and more followers every day. Um, and that's just a quick way we can communicate to parents and, and, and the community what we're, what we're doing. Um, so I guess what I try to do in Tech Ed is I try to reinforce engineering and science as much as possible. We <coughs> talk Newton's Law and Science, I need to talk Newton's Law in Tech Ed. And um, one way to do it with, is with a CO2 vehicle basically, but also with a CO2 vehicle which is nice is kids are using machines, with, you, know, you know, using band saws, drill presses, um, talking about safety. And then, you know, how it's powered, it's powered by a CO2 cartridge, basically. And then when a needle hits the CO2 cartridge, the CO2 comes out, and the cartridge goes forward. And that's Newton's third law of motion. Okay, so that, uh, the egg cars and engineering uh, project, they actually have to build this base, and then I tell them to take it home. And what they have to do then is they have to develop a bumper system and a seatbelt system or a, a, you know, a car seat or something to keep that egg safe. So I'm trying to piggyback off of science again because science has the the egg drop, and it's another problem-solving engineering thing. Um, I guess I try to have as much fun as possible with the kids, and, and we, get, we get to do hands-on activities. I know I'm not supposed to talk very long, but I might as well keep going. We talk about <laughs> energy with solar. Solar is kind of a little passion of mine. I mean, I'm, I'm excited because we're talking about with the, the, the referendum coming through. We have solar is going to be coming in at, um, at the middle school. And I'm looking to get involved with that and, and maybe 
enjoy being part of the process of when they're building it, just seeing exactly. So I can teach that with the kids and show them. And we can show them the savings and we can show them a renewable um, energy resource and stuff like that. Um, so with that, you know, we talk about wind energy, we talk about solar. This is solar car. This is crazy. Like right now, it's not running at all, but you take this out to the sun, and this, this motor here will just start purring. It's like unbelievable how it's like, man, this is a solar panel. And I talk about kids, like, you know, when I built, when I started 10 years ago in teaching, and we built these steel tw or these uh, solar cars, <clears throat> this thing would barely run. But the technology on solar in the last umpteen years, it's unbelievable how they can really get these things working real well. Um, <clears throat> this is a steam engine here, and then this basically shows how electricity is generated. So this is an external combustion engine, basically, and we get this, we get started, and we can show how this will get going, and it's going to spin this generator and produce electricity. So we'll talk about electricity also, and where it comes from, how it's generated. Um, this is just a little, little, you know, an engine. We talk about the difference between an engine and a motor also, and this is an engine, obviously. We talk about, you know, how it works, and the, the four strokes of a four-stroke engine, and so on. Um, here, last thing I'll talk about. This, this is a battery. You guys, I don't know if you read this in the newspaper, if you talked to anyone, we have two solar panels outside of the middle school, and they go into science classrooms. And what they do is they actually generate electricity, which is awesome, and they, they, they uh, charge a battery, and we have like four or five of these batteries throughout, and they're portable. So once this gets powered, we can use that to charge things in the school. We can run laptops, we can recharge kids' cell phones, and so on. And you know what, what I always tell kids is to think about it. This electricity came from the sun, you know. It came from that solar panel outside down in school. So, In a nutshell, I, I reinforce science and engineering as much as possible. And math. And math. And we have fun doing it. So, thanks for listening. I'm over my time, by the way. I'm sorry. Maybe it'll be your next Yeah. Hi. So, um, I'm the art teacher, Megan Cooney, and there's a lot of natural connections in art with <coughs> steam as far as the limitations of the materials and the science behind why you can use some kind of material and why it won't work. Um, there's a lot of creative problem solving in art, but I wanted to share with you today some of the things that I'm doing this year to kind of push the steam aspect a little bit more in the art classes. Um, one thing is the eighth grade art is actually split up into two types of sections this year. They can choose between eighth grade art studio or eighth grade art design. Um, and the eighth grade art design class is doing a lot of things that are a little bit more relevant to STEAM. Um, so we started out there with, they learn about the same kind of concepts as the other class, but through more design process. So graphic design is how they learn about the elements of art. This is an example of um, a graphic design project by an eighth grader. And then this is an example of one where it's incorporating more technology. And so we're starting to experiment with, can we design it on the computer um, as well? Then we do a digital photography unit. So um, we're incorporating the principles of design into that. So instead of making a painting composition, they're using iPads and doing some photography. And I'm going to have a couple examples of that also. Um, color theory. Color is a big connection between art and science. It's um, something, a big concept that we learn about in art and also eighth grade science studies wavelengths and color and how that works. So that's something that we're working on making some more connections through. So these are some examples of some color wheels that they designed. And there was a lot of math that went into that, trying to figure out, okay, if there's 12 colors, how can I use that compass or protractor to figure out, okay, every 30 degrees I need to do color and how do the colors mix with the primary colors. Um, during third quarter, we're going to do some more three-dimensional designs. So we're going to focus on some architecture, um, some product design, and just kind of engineering how we're going to construct those things. Um, so this next slide shows some of the digital photography that the students did during first quarter. Um, so they were learning about principles of design. So some of these are focused on balance or rhythm and repetition or emphasis. You can see some of them, they colored part of the photo and left the rest black and white. So these are all pictures that were taken on the school grounds, going around looking at some different things in the hoop house or the school forest, or this is a project that they were doing in tech ed, and then finding some of the principles of art in those things and then editing them. 
We also talked about um, symmetry, which will relate, relate back to the math as they created kind of different kinds of symmetrical edits with the photos. Um, so this is a video of a painting. So this was an activity I did with the kids when they were when we were doing our color theory unit. So we were using a sphero, which is an app-controlled ball, to create a painting. So they were using the ball to go through the primary colors of paint and kind of mix together. <coughs> So there's different ways we can kind of extend the learning of that with perhaps you can code. Um, you can code that to make different patterns and so they could they could create a code and make a specific design or we could or they could create their own draw box. So they take a battery and kind of figure out how am I going to make mark making with a robot. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk briefly about is the innovation lab that we have at OMS. So this is a new thing this year. It's kind of a secondary to, an, to the art room creative learning environment, similar to a maker space. Um, this room is available to different teachers in OMS that they can check it out and bring their students there. It gives an opportunity for the students to be making, constructing, engineering things for different classes other than in art. So, this picture is an example of students that were coming up there during the egg drop project and they were designing things with the materials that are in there. There's a lot of 3D construction materials, recyclable <coughs> items. There's technology available in there, such as a green screen. There's claymation stuff. There's art and design resources. These other pictures are from a phase project that was done recently in there. So you can see some of the different things they were doing to use on, um, like, construction methods to make projects for face. This was um, t-shirt design using spray and bleach on the t-shirts. This was some stuff with the green screen and that's something with claymation. So that's something that we are continuing to kind of figure out how we can incorporate into all the different classes for OMS. All right, Mr. Spade. Hi, I'm Dave Spade. I uh, did seventh and eighth grade science at OMS. And um, what I'm going to talk about is really the <coughs> cool forest in our woods. And the reason why I'm going to talk about it is because this is a resource that's really invaluable to us. If we did not have the school forest, it would make our, le our learning and teaching really hard and difficult. It's just something where if you're going to teach about natural phenomena found in the natural world, <laughs> why would you go outside and actually experience it? It's one thing to read about it, to talk about it, to actually get outside and to do it, that's when it becomes an experience and where people start to learn it. Um, so different things that we do in our classes, in seventh grade, one unit that we cover is plants. And part of plants is classification and identification. You have to be identified different uh, species of trees. And one thing that Dan Howard did in his class, well, that he kind of did last year with the seventh grade science students, was they planted how many trees was it? Close to a thousand trees to extend our forest and actually make it larger. One thing that I had my students do this year is because of those trees, last year they didn't even have, have leaves or anything. They just looked like little sticks that the kids were putting in the ground. But this year I had my kids actually go out, measure the height, see how much they grew, identify them, they drew the leaves, and then they tried to, use, they tried to identify them based upon just a poster I have in my room. So I didn't have every single type of leaf on there, but the kids were like, oh, I think, I think it's this, I think it's this, but they were able to use some information and then apply it. Um, other things that you can do with that is scott berry scatter plotting. One thing we want to really do with those trees is figure out which ones are surviving and which ones are going to eventually not survive, because there will be a percentage of them that won't. So then you can scatter plot that and also figure out um, maybe why some of them didn't survive compared to other ones based upon location or based upon different, um, different factors. One main thing that we do is restoration. And I'm really <coughs> lucky because having 8th grade and 7th grade, I'm able to go to study halls, go to math labs, and I'm able to ask kids if they want to come help me in the woods, help me pull invasive species. And you see kids faces light up, and it's, it's not the kids that you would really think would be so interested in it, 
And when they get out there, they really do. They love it. And, and it's cool because when they're out there, I put team building up here because it really is. You see the kids working together, and they always want to get the big stump, the one big stump. And you'll have three kids sitting there chopping away with, with shovels. But they're all working together. And sometimes it's a, such a mix of kids that you would never think they'd be able to work together. But they have one real uh, main goal, and they do it. They work together. Um, so it's a district resource as well. You can see here, these are fourth graders. Yep, so we had fourth graders come in last year, and they actually were pulling invasive species as well, <coughs> big and small. So um, one thing that's kind of starting to take over the woods is garlic mustard, and it, it's invasive. It's not supposed to be there. And so they get to learn about that as well as pull it out and help us out and learn. Um, and then one thing that we're really, really, um, well, it's going to happen. We, we, we're going to need it in the future is GIS. We have the software. DPI bought it for us, for the whole state, actually. And so we're going to have that software, but the thing is we need the training and we need GPS units. And with that, we can actually map out the woods. And this isn't something just for science or technology. This is also for things like um, geography. Instead of looking at an atlas, have them go out and actually make it for themselves. It becomes so much more than just an activity. It becomes that experience. So that's something that right now we're going to have to either get some grant money or we're going to have to do something, but we're going to have it. In the next five years, we will. Um, and then this next slide, this next slide is um, an article that was just uh, written about our school, and this was published through the University of Stevens Point and sent out, so this was in their service letter. Um, and it's all about what we're doing here at our middle school. So uh, here you can see some kids that are working out in the woods, working together to get take one of the logs out. And um, when I was talking to him, one thing that he said to me, he's like, so how long have you been here? And I told him that, because this is my second year. I said, this is only my second year. He's like, how did you guys get this? Like, did you just come into this and, and like start talking with these people and say, hey, can I, can I be a part of it? But all the time being on this team, it's just been open arms. If you want to do something, they let you do it. So he's like, if I would have known about this, I would have applied for that job. And that is, that's saying something, because he's like, I, I would work in this district. So that was an, a huge, huge, huge compliment to everything that's going on here. Um, but yeah, if you haven't taken a look at this or you haven't been able to see this, you should talk to one of us and we can forward to do this because he said a lot of nice things and had nothing but praise for our school and what we're doing. Alright, thank you guys. I'm Darren Hartford. Sorry if I steal the water. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I am the health um, education teacher, or better yet, the health science teacher, or even better yet, the health student teacher. So I'm here to um, show that this can go beyond the S, T, B, A, and M um, and go into the health realm as well because health encompasses everything related to S, T, B, e, A, and M. So if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. One of the famous uh, quotes from Princess Bride, if you've ever seen that, um, <laughs> have it, it's worth it. Um, so these are just a couple of the things that we do. I'm actually going to do an audience participation activity real quick. Um, to show you this, this is one of the aspects. We do a uh, sound lab, looking at the health of sound and how sound related to energy, and energy a huge aspect in all of science that we take a look at. But this is a, um, a, a decibel meter app, of course not exactly the same as a decibel meter in the sciences, but it allows you to be able to get an idea here. What I want us to do is I'm just going to tap this and I'm going to show you what the sound is when we're not speaking. Shows about 54 is about the decibel level. Okay. Now I want you all to clap for about five seconds. Ready, set, go. <laughs> 90 is the the decibel level that we're at right there. At 90 and about, if we did that for uh, I think it's about, and I can take a look at the data for about two hours straight, we would have some permanent damage on our ears. And what we do in class is we actually hook this up to students' iPods and put it in their ears and put this next to an, um, a, um, a, a, um, one of their earphones and show what is the level that they're listening to their music at. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this, right? 
students learn something about the power of sound, the energy of sound, and how it affects their health. And this is one of the aspects, just like many of these um, labs that we take a look at, labs related to environmental, or I'm sorry, about scientific modeling for life skills, about linear equations, about how it affects their food um, each and every day when they take a look at a programs that allow them to map their food intakes. So we take a look at all these aspects. And um, just one of them that we talked about real briefly is, of course, the planting of greens that shows how energy takes the full cycle in our world, from seed to, of course, plant, to harvesting those plants, to consuming the plants, and then putting those compost aspects. We haven't even talked about compost, but we have a composting system in our school that allows us to take the, um, the uh, refuse that we have in our food uh, products, put it back into the aspect of our, oops, sorry, our composting bins outside in our, house, our, our school, and it allows us to put it back on our fields, and that whole cycle of energy goes right back into the ground so that we can show students, and they are part of the composting, they're part of the planting that we showed here. Okay, students planting, of course, more students planting on, um, sorry, on the next slide. We have students being able to help actually produce this cycle and be part of this cycle so that they can see what it looks like to have energy be part of their life, not just being this person who comes to school and learns or sits in a, a seat and consumes that, but they're actually part of the process too. So that's part of the neat aspects of health and that's why we do with the lab, lab that we do so that students can see what is actually being part of a community versus just sitting in a chair showing up at school because they quote unquote have to be there and they enjoy this part of being part of the process. So um, the future is the last aspect that we'll have Nate Marr. Thank you. So, thanks. so taking us to the future then, we are excited about uh, of having the resources allocated to uh, the middle school and our other school buildings here in Oregon to be able to take our STEAM concept further and uh, to really have an even uh, more impressive experience for our students. So the future, uh, in, in tying in this, this concept of an inspirational space, okay, we, we feel that the STEAM curriculum is an inspirational curriculum. We need to have spaces that are uh, equally as inspirational to, to carry out that curriculum. So to that end, um, as we work with our design team, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, working with a, a landscape architect that uh, has specific training and excellence in um, restoration landscapes and, uh, and educational landscapes and uh, native landscapes that we're able to tie our, our inside building to the out and the outside in so there's just a smooth transition. Um, kind of going a classical route on this, this, this really goes back to some of the uh, the principles of Frank Lloyd Wright of bringing all these things together, and that we would like our uh, our school to be inspirational to a uh, student and staff member within that building. So we need to do some different things with our building, um, not just uh, uh, finishes, but with uh, what the spaces look like. Bring our STEAM area together for collaboration of both students and staff. Bring them into the same area in the building um, to have um, really a modern. Um, tech lab with modern science labs um, right there with the greenhouse to grow the plants. We're talking about doing these restoration um, of both uh, the Lerner Park Prairie um, uh, prairie sections around the middle school and then our, our entire school forest. Um, we'll be working again with that landscape architect to, um, to be able to put forth a, a plan that we can carry out with our students. Okay, again, they're, they're, they're part of um, the practice and the entire restoration. So to that end then, um, some, some parts of the outside uh, facility, we've got, uh, we do want to, uh, in the very near future, get uh, an outside uh, classroom, actually a couple different outside learning areas put in, including outdoor kitchen. We need a place to, um, to prep our, our school produce. Um, the, the greenhouse, uh, being able to put uh, an entire classroom of students into our greenhouse, again, to, to grow. We're talking about um, greatly expanding the number of plants that we grow at the middle school. Uh, we, we just don't have the facilities to do that um, the way we are going to need to do it to, to have this, this great, um, different landscape at, at Oregon Middle School so that when someone drives up um, to the front of the middle school, they, they know that we mean business and that it's inspirational from the, the, the second you, know, you, you, you even set foot out of uh, the vehicle. Again, the vehicle, maybe working back for Green and Healthy Schools, is we need to have less vehicles rolling through our parking lot and we need to work with um, our, our citizens to, you know, to, to do that. We have a transportation system that we need to probably uh, do a better job of, uh, of using here. 
uh, in Oregon, um, adding a, a council ring uh, outside of uh, the outside uh, facility for, again, a, another place um, to meet, uh, to do different activities that haven't even been thought up yet, but we, we were laying down the facilities for the future. And we, we don't know what our students are going to be doing for, uh, for their uh, employment and, uh, and what they would like to do in the future, but we have to lay down the foundation for them to be able to dream up those things for future staff members, to be able to do new things that, again, we, we don't even know what they are. Um, but if we don't have the facilities, then they're never going to be able to have the opportunity um, to do that. Um, some of the things, the components of the outside, um, having spaces where uh, middle school students, they, they like to hang out. There, there's a wide variety of, you know, some students are perfectly happy to play, you know, a, a game on the playground at lunchtime. Some just want to hang out. Um, some, they, they want to run around. They, 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 in some ways, they look like advanced elementary um, students. But in other ways, they, they just want to hang out in their, their not-so-advanced high school students. But there's that, that in-between, and there's really a big spread. So we need to have these types of facilities that, again, uh, they're inspirational and they're useful at the same time. So having areas like this where, you know, kids want to tear around and, and run across the tops of these things, um, you know, it's kind of like some days it's, it's almost like you're, you're, you're looking into the chip cage at the zoo. Um, and, but, but the fact is that's, you know, that's what our students do and they need that. But at the same time, they could, you know, they could use this, this type of structure to just hang out and have a conversation or for us, uh, a, a teacher to take a classroom out there and to have a discussion, or maybe we're, again, we're using it within the arts or we're writing about something. Uh, in, any, in any case, different people can use it the way they see fit that, that best fits their, uh, what they need at that particular time. And it's just nice to be around. We want, we want good places for our students. Uh, you know, we want to inspire students, but we have to do that um, from, the, from the second day they hit those school grounds. So we're using uh, the entire uh, set of, of facilities that we have and enhancing those. Um, and just some other things that, um, that are useful. It, may, it blends into the landscape, but, but kids love to jump you know, and, and run and play, and, and who knows what they'll even you know, design. Hopefully not hurting themselves too badly. Uh, we try to limit the amount of blood, of course. Uh, but, uh, but it's things that, that, again, are inspiring. So um, we do appreciate uh, allowing us to come in and speak to you this morning. And thanks to Oregon Rotary because you, you really helped to drive what you're seeing today and what you're seeing uh, in the near future. Thank you. For questions, uh, any, any of my colleagues, if you guys need to, to roll on out, um, Shannon, you can head on back to the. I think we're I think we're still ahead of the, of the witching hour at the middle school. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I don't want to sound like an old fogey here, but this all sounds wonderful and great, and kids get to learn a lot of things. But what about the reading and writing? Do you use this to also have them write reports? So that they learn how to communicate to the written word, for example. Right. So this, these are these are ways, in fact, to to do even more of that in a more inspirational way and in a more uh, a more real way for our students. So um, the students um, have more choice as far as what they're going to write about. Again, we have standards that we teach to, and those those reading standards, those writing standards, um, those can be taught in all of the areas. So in fact, um, we we're taking. Uh, we're taking these these skills and pulling them out of isolation, and we're bringing them into um, to relevancy in all areas. So we write in the sciences, we read in the sciences. We we have to read and write in different ways, but we do them in all of those areas. So instead of just making oh well, you just do that in English class, um, we don't just do it in English class. In fact, uh, it would almost um, seem silly to our students. Uh, we feel that you would just do it in one area because well, don't you need it in all areas? Uh, and that's the principle behind the, the STEAM uh, education philosophy. Uh, have, I'm seeing the demonstration here of collaboration between the different uh, 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 curriculums, teaching Subject classes, areas. Subject areas. Uh, and in that spirit of collaboration, which is very much the essence of STEAM, uh, I was a little bit concerned when the design of the school came out uh, with a wing sort of separate that that was going to be the steam wing instead of being something that was uh, in more of a collaborative location and design. Some, right. uh, I heard something was possibly being redone. Is that happening? 
Yeah, that'll be part of our uh, design team specifically. Um, we will uh, be strong proponents and, and have, we, we have some initial um, plans that really we have been laid out for the last couple of years that will work with our design teams at the middle school um, to bring together um, the tech lab with the science labs with the math, um, the math, um, particularly in eighth grade. You know, it's when, the, when the referendum was uh, okayed, it was okayed for square footage uh, of building uh, and, and really just okay for the resources. So you know, it's essentially like, well, here's, here's the resources, here's the dollars you have to work with. Um, we've got to take care of a number of different needs and that is, that is one very large need that, um, that, that we will be uh, working to address, to bring those areas um, together okay, for collaboration of both staff and students. Because this, it's the collaborative piece that really allows us to do the things that you've seen. Uh, many of these things have, have, have happened within the last two years when we finally got people together to be able to discuss the commonalities and, and the overlap where we can support one another and, and again, allow the students to, to hit the standards they need, but in a meaning, uh, meaningful way to them. I just want to comment and thank you all for the enthusiasm you bring to what you do and how that, I'm imagining, how that translates into the students' willingness to be engaged and listening. And I just want to point out that the buildings are wonderful, but without each of you in those buildings doing what you're doing, they would be dry sticks. Yeah, we, we, we thank you. We, we feel the same way. And again, this is, this is where that collaborative piece, um, it, it, again, this, this is not old school anymore. This is new school, and we'd like to make it an even newer school um, to do things that, um, that haven't been done before, um, to not just, just copy other districts. Because by the time you, you copy someone, you're already old, and, and, and honestly, you're not best serving your students. So we do feel that, again, as we, we work on designing our building, that we are going to, um, to set up to figure out what we need to do um, to have the facilities to allow the collaboration of, of staff and students. And that does help people um, that does help people be excited about what they do, and, and we do uh, we pass that along to our students, and, and we of course draw upon the you know the energy of the students. We we've got a lot of positive energy at the middle school. The kids are our solar power. I, I thought this might be a great opportunity to segue and put in a plug for a referendum that's going to be coming up in the spring. Obviously, we're really delighted and excited with the support that this community has provided for the school district for the passage of a referendum, which will mean a lot in terms of the kind of environment. That they have, but the most important thing that happens in the schools is the results of the people that are in there. And so we really want to make sure we're able to provide a way of providing a, a really supportive and a positive environment with good teachers that will help drive this kind of program. It's great. I, I'm really excited to see this. And the work that you do shows the collaboration and the excitement and the fact that you're really in the forefront. What we're doing here in Oregon um, is heads and tails above a lot of other school districts right now. We are really making it happen, and it's because of you, and uh, you make us proud. So thank you so much. Thank um, Nate and the, the rest of his team um, for being here, and um, the Rotary Club will make um, donation to the Poyle Plus Foundation that to order international on, on your um, you guys behalf. Thank you. So and um, thank you again. If you can if anyone has any other question, you might be able to sneak in one or two before they have to pick up. Yeah, and, and we uh, we welcome contacts from from our the, the people who support us and we support you. So if you have any additional questions, we do um, we would like you to take a look at you know, the STEAM Facebook page. You know, take a look at the article that was done um, from Stephen's point. These are, um, these are the, the point thing in particular is that's a key source of information for educators in Wisconsin in environmental education, energy education. Um, Stephen's point is where a lot of those, um, those in, intense and really good programming comes from. So take a look at that. Uh, if we can, I mean, feel free to um, talk to us on the street. Contact us with email, you know, call us um, because again, we we found that the more people know, the more we're able to do. So uh, we 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 we're glad we're able to hear be here to inform people to let you know what we're actually doing at the middle school, so we can continue to have that support, and you can go out and uh, and simply by passing along, hey, you know, at the middle school, they're doing these types of things. 
and we're, we're trying to find connections between anything that we do. We know we have a lot of resources uh, in Oregon, and it, it's just a matter of leveraging those resources in uh, the way that they need to be leveraged to, to do something different. And we, we feel there's a lot of uh, value in that. There's a lot of human capital and human knowledge that, um, that that's right here, we, but we just have to get it out. You have to, you have to start spending that capital um, to make it useful. Otherwise, it's it's not it's not meaningful until you actually use it. And we, we of course, I knowing you know many of you um, some better than others. I, I know that there's a lot of capital you know just sitting in this room right now, and, and we've been privileged to have Oregon Rotary supporting us. You know, again, thank you for that because um, without that, we wouldn't be able to get some things going. Um, a lot of times, it, it just takes enough. Um, enough resources to get over the hump and then you can let stuff take off from there and then I think you're really really going to see that blow up at uh, the middle school and we get our, uh, our our steam area um, solidified and we get some um, some remodeling done and, and again bring more of our, our colleagues in with time as they get more comfortable um, with the sciences and the technology and the mathematics of it um, it's not hard um, it, it's just a matter of, of allowing the, the staff and the students to get together and share their strengths and it's way more fun that way as well other questions I just want to comment that um, the last couple of years the hip house and the gardens at the middle school um, provided food for the food pantry and somebody is standing there uh, Cheryl who uh, was out there in the summer in some very hot weather helping provide those vegetables. So it's a great way to extend the reach of the school into the community. Yeah, and you know, we really ultimately probably have, um, we could probably go on for a couple hours um, and, and pe keep people pretty engaged and entertained with, uh, with all the things. We bring some students in, so we kind of gave you the, the, uh, the really quick version. But yeah, and Cheryl, Cheryl was uh, with us when we spoke last spring, but we, we are interested in in knowing how again we can we can leverage these resources and find the needs of our community that we know that there um, there are needs of, of food and and other necessities for families in Oregon and that we we actually have we have a food and and the capacity to grow considerably more food uh, particularly with uh, with the management of, of the outside garden in the summertime at Cheryl's um, Cheryl is the person who's done that. Um, I, I do a little bit of, of work in the spring to get some things planted, but then, so, so Cheryl, we, we, we stick a lot of prairie plants in a, uh, the outside of the building, too, in our, our landscaping, and then after that, it's like, go, go to town, and she has, and it's been better every single year, and we're ready to do more, and in fact, start to engage other um, service groups, in addition to Rotary, well, how, how can we take some of that food out to um, get, get it to where it needs to be, in the food pantry and, and wherever that may be. Thank you.